Welcome to Smith Weekly Discussions, an occasional program for our members of Smith Weekly Research. Please note this program is a private discussion and everything contained herein is for entertainment and educational purposes only. With that, we hope you're in a comfortable position along with your favorite beverage to enjoy the discussion. We remind our audience to examine our show notes attached to each of our shows to better understand how our program functions. Before we get into our discussion, we wanna say thanks for questions coming from our audience at Smith Weekly, including Mike P, Luke A, Cindy W, and Brent S. On the program today is a returning guest, Mr. James Atherton has joined us. James is the founder and CEO of Capiche Capital Technologies, CEO of Capiche Crowdfunding, and principal at Capiche Legal. At Capiche Capital, he is developing and operating disruptive client-centric solutions for the capital markets. James is also well experienced in the equities markets, regulatory, and governance. You can learn more about James and his work by visiting the various business websites, the first being capiche.io. Jim, it's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Welcome. Thanks, Andrew. Always a pleasure to talk, and uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a while since we've talked, and of course, there's been lots of progress with some of your initiatives in the capital markets and a lot of the work you're doing. Jim, there's been uh, some buzz lately, of course, uh, for some folks, maybe are new to this, but the listed issuer financing exemption, or LIFE as they call it, uh, why don't you start off here by just kicking off with your comments on how this new exemption is getting adopted into the market, and tell us also why it's so significant for retail investors. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. So as you say, the listed issuer financing exemption, or LIFE is the, the acronym for that, that was introduced back in November of 2022. And it really represents a major shift in how public companies can raise capital. Um, historically, uh, many of your listeners would, of course, be familiar with private placements. And that's where companies are often offering shares at a discount, often with added benefits like warrants. Uh, these sorts of private placements were largely reserved for accredited investors and institutional investors uh, and insiders. And life offerings, that, that's all changed. These opportunities are now opened up to retail investors and really levels the playing field allowing more people to participate in these potentially lucrative deals. Jim, and talk just a little more about a summary of what it is, kind of the mechanics for the audience, because uh, I would say a good portion of them probably aren't familiar with this uh, new exemption, uh, obviously applicable to the Canadian markets. Um, but just talk a little bit about the mechanics, key features, benefits for both the issuers, and then also, of course, bringing more investors into these basically private placements. Yeah. So as I say, introduced in November 2022, so relatively new, that exemption really is designed to make it easier and more efficient for public companies listed on Canadian stock exchanges uh, to raise capital by offering freely tradable equity securities to the public. And one of the key advantages of these offerings is that it allows issuers to leverage their continuous disclosure record, meaning they don't need to prepare a full prospectus. Instead, they can distribute these securities using brief offering document and that's really much easier and quicker to, to prepare. For issuers, this is gonna really broaden the pool of potential investors. And now they can include retail investors who are traditionally excluded from these opportunities. And they're gonna buy in on the same terms as accredited investors and insiders. And so this is gonna be particularly beneficial for small to mid-sized companies looking to raise smaller amounts of capital quickly and efficiently. And then from the investor side, uh, life offerings provide access to investment opportunities that were previously uh, not available to them. Uh, so they can now participate in these offerings with all the protections of a prospectus, including statutory rights of withdrawal, rescission, and damages. And as I mentioned earlier, the securities issued under these life offerings are also freely tradable, which means investors don't need to wait for a hold period to expire before they can sell their shares. Uh, this provides, of course, greater flexibility and liquidity. Really, you know, it's, it's going to be, it is already a game changer for the Canadian capital markets. It's offering a, a more efficient way for companies to raise capital while also offering, uh, opening up opportunities for retail investors to participate. It's really creating a more inclusive and dynamic market environment. Yeah, I think it is important for, I think at some point we were all retail investors and that was always the challenge, right? Is just trying to get retail is incredibly important and there's a lot of small investors out there and this really does start to open that up and kind of levels the playing field a bit in terms of opportunity and deal flow and 
folks who can actually get involved at these terms. And I think it makes a lot of sense. And I'm glad to see this start to get out there and get more traction as it's been out there, as you know, for well over two years now. And so it's good to see this. Just for the audience who, you know, maybe wants to understand this a little bit more, talk also about, you know, how life compares to other exemptions like the existing security holder exemption. We've, of course, seen that in the past. What are your thoughts there? I think we talked a bit about that last time I was on the podcast, and that was a few years back. But the regulators did come up with some exemptions. You know, the writing's on the wall. They want to push things away from just accredited, just institutions and allow retail participation. And the existing security holder exemption uh, was a step in that direction. But that one had its limitations. Under that exemption, there were limits on how much investors could invest that were retail. And also it was a precondition that they held shares before the offering was announced. So life on the other hand, doesn't have these limitations. It allows any retail investor to participate, whether or not they hold shares before the announcement of the private placement. And of course, this is gonna open the door to just a much broader group of investors, uh, ensuring that more people can benefit from these discounted offerings and, and the potential upside that comes potentially with warrants if they're included. Well, I suspect we do have listeners outside of Canada, outside of uh, North America, international investors, as we would just you know, collectively classify them, who might be interested in these types of opportunities. Can non-Canadian investors participate in offerings under the listed issuer finance and exemption? Yeah, in most cases, there's a cross-border component to these, so into the U.S. and uh, international outside the U.S. So although it is an exemption under the Canadian regulatory framework, it doesn't automatically exclude non-Canadian investors from participating. Uh, but there are some considerations for these issuers uh, that need to be looked at at the time of, uh, of setting up their financing. Firstly, uh, the issuers need to ensure that any securities offered under these life offerings comply with the securities laws course in the jurisdiction where the investor resides so for example if offering into the united states or to u.s persons the issuer is still going to need to comply with u.s securities laws and there may well be a hold period under those laws despite not being one of the four month and a day hold period under canadian laws so it's really important that issuers work closely with legal advisors to navigate these challenges uh, particularly when they're going to be targeting investors outside of canada just to be clear you know, when you do a life offering, you offer it into the U.S., offer it internationally, but you and your council need to pay careful attention to um, to the home country's legislation and what compliance needs to be taken care of there. Appreciate that. And it's good to hear that the international audience or international investors have the opportunity, uh, depending on their jurisdiction, of course, and some of those circumstances you mentioned, to participate in this. And that would, of course, be generally allowable uh, within the Canadian framework as well, so long as the local jurisdiction is also handled. Appreciate that. And I think the overall point here is, you know, expanding access to these deals is really good for retail investors. But talk about a little bit uh, how you see this impacts the overall market. Yeah, to me, it's huge. Uh, I mean, it's hugely significant on our markets. So as you say, kind of broadening access to investors and who can participate is one thing from the investor's perspective that's beneficial. But to the market itself, I mean, it, with these additional investors, even if it's smaller dollar amounts and kind of smaller shareholdings, you know, these, these are people trading in the market. So it's certainly enhancing uh, liquidity and improving price discovery in, in our junior markets. So when more participants are involved in these financings, it's, it's certainly a healthier, more dynamic market environment. And it really, as I say, is important for small and mid cap companies uh, who often struggle with liquidity. So by bringing in more retail investors, we're not only creating opportunities for them, but also stabilizing the market, which is to everyone's benefit. In many ways, I regard this as really a lifeline for the junior markets, which have faced really significant challenges in recent years. I think this is pretty interesting. And definitely can see some of those benefits and the overall process to include real retail investor here as well. So you've mentioned that, of course, you know, the listed issuer financing exemption or life as we shorten it up here, um, opens the door for retail investors. But talk just a little bit more about the company side or the issuer side and how they manage the complexity of these offerings. What role do platforms that you have created like Capiche uh, play in this process? 
Yeah, that's a crucial point, Andrew. While the life exemption is powerful from the regulatory side uh, for democratizing access, uh, the practical implementation of these offerings can be more complex. So you know, really we're talking about bringing in larger numbers of investors for smaller dollar amounts. And in that particular case, it, it's even more onerous for companies potentially to do their private placement. So managing the documentation, ensuring compliance, processing subscriptions from this broad group of investors does require robust technological solutions. And, and that's where online platforms like Capiche come in. Capiche simplifies and streamlines the entire process, making it feasible for companies to offer these opportunities to a wider audience without getting bogged down in any of the administrative challenges. Appreciate the comments there and, and how that can help streamline it for the issuer side. Um, a simplified process using, well, obviously life in itself is, is a little bit more simplified, but then also when you bring in a platform like Capiche, it really brings it into simplification and in my opinion inexpensive compared to the traditional processing that would happen by you know basically all this paper passing by hands and computers so appreciate the comments there you know life is definitely gaining steam here for sure we're seeing companies take advantage of this exemption you know so far how have you seen in your experience because you're in this every day in the canadian markets how do you think the markets responded and have we really kind of got that critical mass yeah, we certainly have many companies taking advantage of the life exemption for their financings. Uh, almost every day, there's a new announcement of a, a life offering going live. Uh, we've done a couple. We've got one live now. We've got another one that will commence later this week. So companies are using it successfully to really engage that broad base of investors. And not only the benefits we've noted already, but really seeing positive feedback from retail investors who really appreciate being able to participate in the offerings that were previously out of reach. Um, I will say that my sense is at this small, uh, at the junior end of the market, the micro caps, the small caps, there's maybe less of an understanding of the exemption and, and how it's used and how, we, how you'd manage that. I am seeing kind of the, the mid cap and, and even some of the larger cap companies using these financings because they are beneficial, obviously, even kind of reaching the broader investment base. But the free trading stock is very palatable to to many players investing in, in the bigger cap companies as well. So I think it's it's moving down market. It was interesting to see when it came out. I, I did I did question where it was going to go and who was going to make most use of it. But I think we're moving certainly down from kind of the mid caps into the, the small caps and the micro caps, and it's getting a whole lot more use these days. Jim, thank you for that. That's good to know and good to see that it's it's getting more traction and getting a lot more eyeballs as compared to 2022. So we have talked a bit about some of the public companies here and the uses there, but let's wrap this into also that, you know, obviously a lot of public companies are at one point probably private, um, but talk about, you know, some of the early stage investments um, before companies go public on the private side and how this fits in, of course, with the equity crowdfunding uh, portion as well, which is a service that you also provide. Equity crowdfunding really is another crucial piece of the puzzle. It is allowing companies at the private stage to reach out to the retail audience. And so with the introduction, it's a, a national instrument here in Canada, 45110. That was released in September of 2021. Uh, retail investors now can access these early stage investments in private companies. And many of these companies will be you know, going public as well on, on the junior exchanges and beyond. So it does, um, it does give the retail investor a chance to get into the pre-public companies as well. And so we operate a equity crowdfunding portal. Uh, in fact, it's the only one permitted to operate across all Canadian jur jurisdictions. Uh, and it allows investors to get in on the ground floor. This means that retail investors can participate in a company's growth from its earliest stages now, uh, just like venture capitalists and the institutional investors. And we really see this as a tool for both companies and investors expanding access to high growth companies that were once out of reach for, for the average person. And I will say that even on these equity crowdfundings, um, getting a broad distribution, allowing a company then to go public and, and meet its distribution requirements on the exchange, those same companies can use the Capiche platform 
uh, and bring in accredited investors and friends and family using the more traditional exemptions, doing a concurrent private placement. So we've really got it from both sides with the equity crowdfunding and the traditional uh, Capiche platform for doing private placements and equity, equity crowdfunding as well. I think the crowdfunding makes a lot of sense for folks who want to, you know, look at what's available pre, you know, IPO, if you will. I think that makes a lot of sense and people can spend a lot of time just looking at all those options in that space as well and potentially have opportunities to invest at earlier stages, which obviously make a lot of sense. So appreciate you bringing that part of it because I think it all kind of ties together here. And then also it draws us back to the platform and the platform offers all of these solutions. So I, I like how you've created and set that up. Well, looking ahead, Jim, what do you see for the future of retail investor participation in private placements and, of course, you know, early stage investments? It's a bright future, Andrew. Uh, more companies are really realizing the benefits of having a broad shareholder base, even as a private company before they're going public. And then, of course, uh, as a public company, for all the reasons we've mentioned, kind of the price discovery and the liquidity and really just... Um, you know, including those investors who are very appreciative uh, and then, you know, talking up the company uh, as well in chat groups and, and wherever else. So there's lots of benefits to to having retail investors. And we also haven't mentioned that, you know, as for accredited investors, it, it, that's a limited pool of capital, right? So whatever the percentage of the population is that's accredited, and it's a very small number, you can be sure that Whatever that number is, uh, it's even a much smaller fraction of that that invests in early stage investments at, and or kind of more speculative type investments that would find on on the junior exchanges. So it's, it's really beneficial to move from a very small segment of the population that can participate into, a, into really any investor can now participate in a private company and or a junior public company using the right exemptions. So for those investors, I think, I think a key point for them will be to seek out and uh, ask the companies that they're interested in or that they've already invested in uh, by purchasing shares on the on the open market, uh, making sure that they're going to be entitled to participate in the next financing of that company. And, you know, platforms like Capiche are, are critical uh, and they play a crucial role in making these opportunities accessible and practical for everyone involved um, without without some sort of technical online solution, it makes it very difficult to complete these equity crowdfunding distributions or, or life offering. Yeah, just so the audience knows as well here, um, I have used the platforms, specifically the standard private placement platform is my most experience. And I can tell you, it's an incredibly convenient, very well comprehensive platform um, as far as document generation, covering all the regulatory hurdles within those documents and all the necessary clauses that are required in these documents. I haven't seen a better solution. This is incredibly well thought out, well prepared, and it's all in an online platform that's very user friendly, whether you're an investor, whether you're an issuer, as well as it covers all your bases. And it does so in what I believe is a very efficient price um, for folks to take a look at and for the issuers to look at as paying those fees. It's very competitive out there. So always encourage people to take a look at that. Jim, well, I appreciate the time and I'd like to wrap up, but of course, have you give some finishing comments um, tied in with among my final questions here. But for the folks listening in, retail investors, uh, of course, your conventional private placement folks, and of course, issuers out there that are listening in, we, we do have issuers that listen to our podcast. Anybody out there who's listening in that might be interested in using your services, Talk about how investors, specifically retail investors, can get more involved with private placements and what they should be doing themselves to actually get the word out about, hey, Mr. Issuer, let us get access to a private placement via the life exemption. Just talk about those various services and, and what the audience can do to help expand the life exemption and get that out there. Yeah, certainly. Thanks, Andrew. So, yeah, it's, in, it's incumbent on retail investors to be proactive. Um, so if you're investing in a public company, ask whether you can participate in its private placements going forward. Life makes it possible for companies to include uh, you as a retail investor, uh, but it's up to investors to advocate for their inclusion. So retail investors no longer need to be sidelined from these private placements and really have the right to demand access to the opportunities. Um, and then really from the investor side, you know, it is reaching out to those companies that they're interested in investing in and, and 
participating in their treasury offerings. So I would say that's the role for the retail investor uh, in this to, to ensure that those opportunities are available to them. And then as for Capiche and the platform, it really is, as I say, a platform that makes it very easy to set up a financing and, uh, and go live with that financing. There is, as we alluded to earlier, uh, an offering document. It's very brief. It's, you know, five or six pages, just kind of updating uh, your continuous disclosure and um, confirming that there's no material changes uh, outstanding and really giving the terms of the financing. So a document that's relatively easy to complete and it, it's really on that offering document and then based on the continuous disclosure that a company is entitled to go live. So with those things in hand, uh, we can get spin up uh, financings very easily. It includes all the standard documentation, subscription agreements are provided, director's resolutions get generated all the way through to your filings with stock exchanges and securities commissions. So it just makes it very easy to go live and administer the private placement. Um, so for those companies that are interested, yeah, by all means, uh, reach out and happy to kind of discuss how Capiche works for, for you to do those life offerings or your traditional private placement and uh, and set up a demo and, and and just really show you how it works i encourage people as well like i said i've used it so i encourage issuers and also everybody as much as they can to hey please use this platform it's so convenient it's cost effective it really works and of course check out the uh, demonstration ability of the platform as well which is pretty cool so appreciate that uh, jim for folks who want to reach out whether this is regular retail investors uh, regular private placement investors, how best can they reach out as well as issuers? How can they contact you? And then also, if you don't mind repeating, what are the uh, websites that they can go check out as well? Yeah, so the main website is capiche.io. So I invite you to go to capiche.io and you can access um, a demo or book a demo through there and <clears throat> get it into the calendar. So that, that would be the first place to go to take a look. But by all means, just send an email directly to me at james at capiche.io. And we can have that uh, set up a time and have that initial discussion about uh, how the platform can work for you and, and if necessary, do a demo as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's capiche.io is the main one, but for equity crowdfunding, we've got a couple different sites there. The marketplace itself is capiche.fund, uh, but those interested in learning more about equity crowdfunding, we do have another site called equitycrowd.fund as well, which gives a full lowdown for investors and issuers uh, alike on, on everything in and around equity crowdfunding. Uh, so those are, are the two main sites. Uh, as you mentioned at, at the top of the interview, uh, in addition to equity crowdfunding and your traditional private placements through the traditional Capiche platform, I also offer legal services. So if legal is a part of what's required, uh, we're happy to work with your existing legal counsel, but those that do require legal counsel as well, uh, we've got you covered there, and that's at capiche.legal. Well, Jim, thank you for that. I do suggest the audience go check out a few of those things. And if you don't understand the crowdfunding, go check out that website as well. Uh, appreciate that. Well, Jim, look, it's it's always a pleasure to chat. Really appreciate you coming back for an update and looking forward to seeing more progress on the platforms and looking forward to chatting again. Welcome back anytime. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me on the show. And it's always a pleasure to share insights with your audience. And I look forward to seeing how retail investors are going to continue to shape the future of our markets.